In this video, we're going to dig a little deeper into materials for KRK and cover how to use your own novelty graphics to create your own novelty keycaps. First, let's turn off these annotations. You can do that by clicking the small arrow on the side or pressing the N key on your keyboard. Under the View tab, you'll find annotations. You can uncheck this checkbox or delete them altogether. The Profile Switcher supports DSA and SA keycaps, but you'll have to manually switch the legends. To do that, you can use the drop-down on the image texture that is connected to the legend mask input. This is a material group that you can hit tab to open and make adjustments inside. The nodes in the material editor evaluate from left to right. Here you'll see the group input that corresponds to these inputs. This is a mix node that adds the sublegends onto the keycap. And this is an, another mix node that adds the legends to the keycap. This is a mix node that uses the ABS PBT input to mix two roughness values and plugs into the roughness. And these are all the nodes that correspond to the bump map. If you decide that you need more control from your material group, for example, you can take the scale for your noise texture and plug it into the output of the group input node. This creates another entry at the bottom. Now you can control the scale from here. Let's take a closer look at what that does. Today we're working on a Cherry Profile set with novelties. We'll need to go into a vector editing application to create the mass texture. I've created a template that you can use in Inkscape. You'll find it in the KRK download section of your Gumroad account. By default, the GMK legends and template base layers are enabled, but you only want the legends to be visible on export. The mask needs to be a white on black image. But we'll need, it, we'll need our template in order to place our novelties. Let's go ahead and create a new layer for our novelties. Okay, I've already imported a set of novelties provided by a Steam member of the Keycap Designers Discord. I'll need to cut and paste that into our layer. Okay, by default the template base is locked in order to prevent any erroneous selections. We can go ahead and disable the GMK base. Sometimes this happens. You just need to go into view, canvas orientation, reset orientation. That happens to me when I hold control while dragging the middle mouse button, which is a habit of using Blender. Okay. Let's have a look at this. 
we're going to use this template to align our legends. But first, we need to unlock it. At the moment, nothing can be selected because it's locked. Click on the little lock icon, and now everything's selectable. Each of these keys is a separate group. So in order to dig into that without actually opening the group, you can hold control. You'll notice that there's a couple squares in the middle here. Those are for different keycap profiles. The inside one is for DSA and SA, etc. And it's a square. The other is a rectangle, more along the lines of DCS and Cherry and OEM. We're going to align to the center of the OEM Cherry profile. Okay, we'll grab one of these. That is the escape key. So in order to add to selection and dig into a group, you hold Control and Shift while you click. I missed. Let's grab that one. Try again, shall we? There we go. Zoom all the way in and click. Now that both of those are selected and this one is selected last, we can align to it using the last selected. There we go. That is centered to the rectangle. Looks a little weird on the, on the square, but it, it'll work. If you find that you get a little lost while you're working in here, you can always turn on the uh, GMK base and you can lock it so it, it's unselectable. That was the template there. Okay. Turn that off. Uh, next, we're going to do the num. Here we go. Missed again. Get back in there. All right, good. And align. All right, I'm going to fast forward as we go through these. Okay, we're ready to export. I'm going to turn off the template base and the GMK base. And now we're, we're left with just a white on black of our novelties. Go ahead to the export dialog and make sure you click on page. This will bring up 4096 by 4096, which is real 4K. Legends novelties dot ping export. Okay. Okay, now we're back in Blender and we can set up our novelties. First things first, let's drop back down and go into the cherry profile. And we also need to set our legends back. Okay, the novelties will be on the modifier keys. So I'm going to select one of them and click the little number. This number signifies how many objects that it's applied to. Now it's applied to only one. And we can rename it. Keycat nov. And any changes we make to this one now 
will not affect any of the others. So I'll go ahead and click here and load up our novelties. Okay, we have our first one. As you can see, it's still white on black here. So we can change the color to anything we want it to. How about a nice red? Now one user came up with an interesting idea that they wanted each keycap to have a different color. We can do that by using the same material if we want to, or we can create multiple materials for each separate color. But this mask will, will stay the same. Now, in order to apply, in order to apply this uh, material to the other keycaps, we can select all of the keycaps we, we want it to apply to first. And then the last one is the one we already have it applied to. Select that, and that's the active object. Now we can link material by hitting Control L, and then M for materials. As you can see they're all red and that's not necessarily what we want. So let's use a trick in order to set the legend to a different color while using the same material. Okay let's add another node here. Shift A to add input object info and we can grab the color node and plug that into the legend. At the moment it's all white because all of their colors are set to white. There are various things that we can plug in here to create a unique color for each one of these objects but a quick and easy one would be the uh, display color. You go down into viewport display from the object properties panel and go to color and choose a color. Let's choose that same red. And now selecting this one we can choose a yellow color and then purple. And then green. and so on. One other thing to note is that in order to copy these colors over to other keycaps you'll need to copy and paste the color. This is actually pretty simple but it's something you have to know. Say I want to make another keycap this orange for example you hover the mouse cursor over the color and hit control C and then you can click on the other object and hit control V while you hover over the color let's do that again with green control C hover control V same with blue control C Click, hover, control V. I'll do some more. Now remember, these are all the same material. There's still some keycaps that I've left out that need to be applied as well. So let's grab them. And then select one with the material already applied as the active object and link the material. Again they're white so I'll need to copy and paste the colors. Okay as it turned out I accidentally positioned one of the novelties wrong in the Inkscape file. So I went back and I fixed it but it's still not fixed. So 
rather than try to uh, unload and reload this, you can actually just, this is why the image editor is here. You can ju just display the right one in this image editor and you'll see that it's still not updated. I actually put it on the tilde key instead of the escape. But uh, since it's already fixed, we just need to re refresh that. So you can press Alt R and there we go. And that one needs to be, that one needs to be yellow. So let's go back into our control C, control V. All right, look at that. Ooh, missed one. All right, one more. Copy. Pasta. All right, good. So one more thing to note here is that we edited this while we were in the kit view. But everywhere else that these keys exist have the novelties on them now. So let's close our kits and go into a board, for example. Okay, this is where we run into a bit of a problem. See, the material has propagated and normally this wouldn't be a problem except for the fact that even if something is an instance it's still going to have a different object color so you can use this to recolor the same keycap over and over that's instanced and have it be different colors in this case it works against this but I'll go ahead and do these two okay here we go now let's have a little fun and create a render setup for this thing. I'll uh, go ahead and turn off that kit and reset the position of this Alt G. Okay, let's uh, let's play with our lights a little bit. Let's see. We'd like to do uh, board lighting too. I love board light board lighting too. And uh, look at our floors. Let's go for. Uh, Wood floor f number four. There we go, that's nice. Okay, back into materials. Now I'm going to select the floor, and here's another uh, material group. And I have tiling set up, and I have a seed set up so it randomizes it, as well as the wood scale, should you decide to make the wood larger or uh, smaller and of course the roughness of the wood if you want it to be pretty shiny or if you want it to be completely matte I like a little bit of gloss on there to emphasize okay and of course uh, there's also plank variation and what that does is uh, each plank itself can tilt a different direction I, I let you completely exaggerate this so you you want to do it you keep it subtle just just keep it subtle all right of course if you want to change any of this you can dig down in there and hit tab and uh, it's a pretty large network but there's a couple of frames here to help you understand what's going on uh, there is the group input and here's the setup for the tiling and that controls the plank pattern but what you're going to change probably is going to be over here, the wood pattern, and mainly in the color ramp itself. All right, let's shrink that again and just look at the color, color ramp and do something to this wood. Um, it looks pretty nice as it is, but say, for example, we don't like this little, this little dark part here. and We want to change it to uh, something lighter. All right, that looks pretty horrible. Undo. All right, add another node in there. And we can change that. Make that have a darker streak to it. There you go. We have completely different wood now. Okay. Uh, next, let's bring in the... Uh, let's bring in our... Uh, 
our USB cable. Uh, this thing is a lot of fun, but um, all right, let's plug it in. Why not? GZ. There we go, because it's centered. VY to pull it back. Maybe needs a little bit of rotation there. Yep. There we go. All right. It's bright green, and it doesn't really fit with our Rama here. Oh, let's uh, let's adjust this a little bit. All right. Good. Let's go for a uh, tech flex. Now again, this is another uh, node group. So let's go in here and change the color to something. I don't know, a little darker. How about some kind of goldy look to it, or or brown or something. And then uh, that bright green can be more of a blue. Let's try and hit that. Uh, uh, what's it called? Lake. All right, darken that a bit, ooh, a bit more. All right, it's starting to look good. But uh, yeah, we, we don't want this um, braid. Let's go for more of a tech flex. And there is actually a, a slider here that will mix it over to a tech flex, more of a tech, tech flex pattern. And if there's any adjustments you want to make, you can dig down into this again. It's another node network. Uh, it looks ugly, but uh, once you get reading this, uh, you'll understand it. There's the occlusion. There's a mask mix node. Over time, you'll just uh, be able to sweep through here and, and control everything. But for now, let's just uh, let's just go with this. Let's be a bit brighter now. There. Look at that. All right. Good. Uh, set up a camera. All right. Let's switch camera to uh, let's try board four. I like that one. But uh, as you can see, it's it's very uh, zoomed in. So um, let's uh, let's turn on the cameras and see in here, so we can see that one. And uh, if we hit tilde and switch over to the view camera, you can actually. Uh, and click on the frame and grab it. Let's see if I got it there. There we go. That has the camera selected. Now, if you hit G and Z, it will move it up in the scene, but we don't want that. Right click to escape. If you hit G, Z, Z, that moves it on the camera's own axis, and that's how we're going to zoom out. G, Y, Y to go vertically. Okay. So we got a bit of a top down here. That's nice. Um, 1920 by 1080. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we'll have to zoom out some more now. G Z Z. Alternately, you can hit the end panel and and uh, lock the camera to view and do some rotations and stuff. That that works okay. All right, now let's let's have a look at. Um, let me unlock that. Yeah, good. So I can zoom in. Let's have a look at what this is going to look like. It's pretty out of focus. There we go. So what we need to do is go into the camera here and, and set our focus distance or take a little shortcut and hit a focus object right there. Yeah, looking good. Okay, we're at f-stop 11, but we're a little further away, so we can hit like 4 or something. There we go, a little, little bit of out of focus. And uh, click this little thing at the top here to turn off all the overlays, so you can see just that. Um, if you move around and, and turn off the render view, this stays rendered over here. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to hit render now. There we go. 11 second render. Thank you.